We're doing part two of analyzing the radical functions. So we're investigating the graph of y equals uh, square root of f of x. So we're looking at the changes within f of x and how it changes from the original. So in each case, the graphic calculator screenshots are from negative 2, 2, 1, and negative 2, 2, 1. So just so you know how those pictures are being made. So A, determine y equals uh, square root f of x. Then use the same window to graph y equals uh, f of x and sketch the graph on the grid. OK. So you're going to kind of think about the state of the domain of the original and the change. So we have x squared. OK. So, we have, so these are all graphs of the originals, it appears. OK. So let's do, oh, I see. So they want us to sketch over these. So let's do that first. So sketch over these, what's going to change? So if we do square root of f of x, where square root of x squared, what's that going to look like? So this is where we have to think about we are doing, it'll be x. That's correct. But it's not just x because the x squared, right? The x squared eliminates those, like the x squared makes the negatives OK. So it's plus or minus x. So what that does is, is that makes it go x, negative x. So plus or minus x. Yep. It'd be plus or minus x. OK, so we'll say it one more time. You guys are, yes, it'd be x. But my point is this, is that if we, if the, we're saying x squared, right? Well, x squared has negative 4 and 4, or both squared give me 16. So the square root of 16 can be from a 4 and a negative 4. So we have to think about the sense that it can be a negative x or an x squared, because if I go negative x squared, and x squared, I still get positive values that are allowed. So the point is, is that, see if you write it like this, I can plug a negative in there. I can put negative 4 in there. Negative 4 squared is 16. So negative x's and positive x's still work. Okay, That's the point. That's what I was kind of talking about in the lesson 1, how, yes, when you square root a 4, we just say 2. So this is an x. It's an unknown value. Okay, So that's what the difference is. So um, yeah, so this one, that's what that kind of looks like. I think mine's actually a little bit too steep, actually. Let me draw it a little bit better. Well, I need to take my eraser down. It's actually, so I think this is the one. Yeah, so it goes a little bit more like this off their window, a little bit wider. OK, so the square root of x cubed. OK, well, that just stays square root of x cubed. Whoops. Now, how does that change things? Let's think about odd even. Yeah, so this one, we can't have negatives. Because if I put a negative into x cubed, what comes out of it? That's a problem. Are you seeing the difference? This one's a problem. This one's not. The square takes care of it for us. So this one. It's going to be um, essentially just, what is it going to be here? They just write x to the 3. So yeah, it's going to be x to the 3 halves. So it goes like this is what they have for the sketch. We can look at that in your graph calculator if you want. But it's not a line. It's the 3 halves. So OK. And then the x plus 1, well, we know this one. We already did this one. It's like that. That just means that our x plus 1 is going to be over here left. So it's going to be right here at the intercept. And it's going to be the ones we did from last lesson. It's going to go like this. Okay, Because of it's a square root x plus 1, right? So it's just shifted left 1. All right, so we have all this up here. Let's write it. So what's the domain of f of x? So we're doing it right below them so for each picture. So domain of f of x. So what's the domain of the original? All reals, right? X, E, R. The problem was good. What's the range for the original? Y is greater than or equal to 0. The problem, right? We're looking at the problem right now. 
What's the domain of the square root of it? Still x e r, right? We can still do all x's because we have both sides there because the square makes it okay. And what's the range? Same thing again. Okay. Good. Now that was an even even. So now look at the odd even. The domain of the original is x e r. The range is y e r. Right, for x cubed, x cubed can be positive and negative values for x and for y. The domain, however, has to be greater than 0. Good. And the range also is greater than 0. Good, good. OK, and for this one here, the domain of the original is x e r. Everything's cool for the domain of a line, x plus 1. The range is also y e r. Domain of the radical of it, or sorry, yeah, the radical of x plus 1 is what? Greater than negative 1? Yep. And what's the range? So one thing I want to point out, just to notice, so notice this one here was an even even. I'm talking about index and root, or index and the exponent. So like this is a square root, right? See those are even even? Gave us some symmetry, okay? This was odd even, and this one is technically what? Odd even. So you see how that odd even, we didn't have the symmetry, like this one's missing the bottom half because I can't do it because of the discrepancy of the two. Same thing here. There's nothing down here because this guy can't be over there because the negatives. This one is symmetry on both sides because it's even even. So paying attention to those relationships of your exponents and index. We got three more to look at here. Any questions on those first three? Okay. All right, so we got, for this one, f of x, absolute value of x. So that means we're doing square root absolute value of x. That's interesting. OK, we got log x. We're doing square root log x. Hmm, these are getting real interesting. OK, and then we have negative x squared minus 1, so square root of negative x squared minus 1. OK, so what are those going to look like? So here's the, the interesting thing. Don't worry about the absolute value as much as what's the absolute value going to do. So can we have negatives? Ah, trick question. Yes, because the absolute value takes care of it for you, just like the x squared did above, right? So if I put a negative 3 into the absolute value, what happens? It says 3. So we're good. So it gives you that symmetry again. Okay. So if I just say, um, if I put a positive x in there, I get root x, right? What's root x look like? That's just your standard radical equation. If I put a negative root x, that negative is taken away because the absolute value. So I get my standard radical equation the other way. Just flips it, right? Because it's the negative x. So you have that symmetry. Okay, you have that symmetry still. Hmm, log x. What do we think? A couple things you can do. That's log. Yeah, so log x. So root log x. You can plug in a couple of values. You can see. What's the. What's the main value, though, that log of what is 0? That's where it's going to start. Log of 1. So it's going to shift. It's going to start here. And our log graphs grew like this, right? Our log graphs went like this. So we don't have anything down here because why? Those are negatives, right? We're not going to have any negatives there. So we are going to go here. And so it's just going to kind of come off there at the end. So you can put that in your calculator and look at that one if you want. But radical of log x. It's going to start at 1 and stay above. OK, 
Okay, good. And then we have negative x squared minus 1. We're doing the radical of that. So this way we want to think about what values can we have. None. Nothing works. Why does nothing work? Right. The, only, the way this could work is if I simply if I change it to plus 1, I have a chance to get something. Because if I put in 0, I get 1, I'm OK. But look, if I put 0 in, I get negative 1. Dang it. If I put in 1 or 2, that's going to be 4. Ah, negative, still negative. 1. 1 squared is 1. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. Yep. So like the whole the point is, is that everything is negative. So there is no domain or range for that. That's not a possible graph. There's no acceptable values. Does that make sense? Okay. So that's why there actually there is no drawing here. <laughs> you just put no picture if you want, but there's no drawing. Okay, so domain of f of x for the first one. What's the domain of the original, the v? x e r. What's the range? Right, absolute value is always going to get out of positive, right? Domain of this one again was x e r, and then y greater than 0. So you see that symmetry just like the one above it. They end up being the same domain and range. Now, what's the domain of log x? Right, we can have a negative argument. It can be 0, though. Log of 0 means it's a 1, right? OK, the range for a log. So you guys missed this on your test. It's y e r. There's not a restriction on your y. Some of you guys remember on your test thought that one flattened out just because the picture looked like it flattened out, but it didn't. Just the one you just took. Or sorry, no, on your log one. OK. Um, domain of the radical of that is what? So it starts not at 0, but 1. OK, good. Yeah, so greater than or equal to 1. OK. And should be the range is going to be y greater than or equal to 0. So I think the book might be wrong on this, but I'm pretty sure we can't get 0 here, right? Yeah, nothing to the nothing to a power will get you 0. So that's greater than 0, not greater than or equal to, you guys. Change this to just greater than. Right? We can't get 0. It's an asymptote essentially. That vertical line, the y axis. Okay? And so the domain of this one here, negative x squared minus 1. The normal domain is all reals is fine. You can put anything you want for x for the original. The range is less than uh, negative 1, less than equal to negative 1. And then for the other two, does not exist. Does not exist for the other two. There is no domain or range for those. Okay. So we're going to kind of put this all together. And it's, there's only a couple examples, just more like kind of lining it up. So looking at all this, so let's look at number two real quick, and then we're going to get some rules coming next, OK? All right, so repeat the work in one, same window. So repeat the work in one. So this would be square root of x squared plus 4. Does this one work? Yeah, because there's values that I can have because I'm, we're positive. OK, so we can do that. So what would this look like? Square root of x squared plus 4. No, nope, can't do that. I know you can't square root piece, piece. Can't do that. Sorry. Yeah, people like to do that. OK, so x squared plus 4, what's going to happen is it just plugs some values. If you put 0 in, what do you get? 4, square root 4, but that is 2. So you're right here. Now I'll just put in like, uh, let's see, what would be an easy one to put in here? 2. So 2, you get root 8, right? 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 4 is root 8. Now that gets you what? So if I put in 2, root 8, so that's almost 3. So if I put in 2, I'm just right about 3. And the point is, if I put 2 and negative 2, that's going to give me the same answer, right? Because negative 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. So you're seeing this is growing the exact same. It's growing like this kind of slightly. Little bit 
flatter than that, probably. I'm a little bit too sharp, but yes, essentially that's what it's doing. Okay, so what is the domain of my original? Right, it's the parabola, x, e, r. What's the range? Greater than or equal to 4. What's the domain of my um, new one? x, e, r. Good. And range is good. Greater than or equal to 2. Good, good. All right, next one, a little bit tricky one because it has some zeros. They've been giving us stuff without zeros. This one has zeros. Okay, so this is a little bit, this is important. So the thing to just to point out, guys, and I'm going to highlight it here for you. When you see this, guys, when you see this, like this relationship here, x squared minus 4, this section is a red section. Why? Right, all those are negative outputs. So all those are values that will be a negative in the radical, so we will not have a graph there for the new one. Those are does not, does not exist sections. Let me say that again. This section signifies values in which, when I plug in an x, I get a negative, so the negative would be in the radical. So that is a problem. Okay. So for example, if, I put, if we write this, it's going to be square root x squared minus 4. And we know if we put 0 in here, 0 minus 4 is negative 4. I can't do that one. I don't have a graph. So where does this start? Where are the zeros? 2 and negative 2. So my new graph is going to start here and here. And they're going to grow away. Because as I square, like if I put 4 and negative 4, that squared what? 16. 16 minus 4 is 12. Both sides were good. So you see the symmetry how it's growing away. So let's go to 4 here. So uh, 16 minus 4 is root 12. Uh, root 12 is between 3 and 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4 right there. Uh, 3.5. Okay, so we'll put it right about there. And then we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4. Put it right about there. It's symmetric. symmetric. And so it's doing this. That's what it looks like. So this one has domain issues, right? It's not just one simple XER. It's not one simple, um, it's going to be two pieces. So let's make sure we see that. So the original is XER for the original. The Y is Y is greater than or equal to negative 4. Now what's the domain for the new one? Right. It's going to be less than negative 2, greater than 2. So x has to be less than or equal to negative 2, greater than or equal to 2. It's two pieces. That's why there's two lines that are separated. Okay. So in this case, is that graph, would you call that a continuous graph? No, there's a break. We have two pieces of it. Okay. What's the range of this one? Right, greater than or equal to 0 still. All right, good. Okay, so answer the following questions based on our observations from those two, um, all that things we just did for all those graphs. So let's answer these questions. We're going to form some rules. Okay, answer the following questions on one and two. In which of these examples are the domains of f of x the same? So which examples were they the same? So just we're going to put the labeling. So which ones were the same? We know that part i or one, one was the same, right? What other ones were the same? Uh, IV was, right? So 4. I wish they just number them. Okay, <laughs> what else was the same? We're doing all of the, yeah, the, all the front page and the last couple we just did. Right. What, this is, which ones were the domains the same? Yep, seven. Yeah. V is five. Each I is one, just if you didn't know Roman numerals and stuff. Okay. Any other questions? So those ones all have the same domain. Okay. What do these graphs have in common? So we kind of kind of talked about this. So it says the function values.
are non-negative, like they can't output a negative. If you look at those functions, all of their outputs are in the positives. Or saying is the function values are non-negative, so that means that every time I put in a negative, something switches it to not negative, and all the outputs are positive. Okay, there's no points below the x-axis in those graphs. Okay, good. C, we're going to do some circling here to kind of form our rules. Do I have them all? Uh, no, let me move this up a little bit. Does everybody have this? Almost. Just give you one second here. So the graph of y equals uh, square f of x does not exist when x is less than zero or f of x is less than zero. Which one is the answer? Like, which one would you circle? Just think about when f of x is less than zero because that means below the line. Okay, that means below the line. If f of x is less than zero, that means your outputs are negative. If your outputs are negative, that means that that's not possible when you're square rooting, right? If f of x is zero, then the graph of y of f of x lies above, on, below the graph of y equals f of x. It's on. Right? Because root 0 and 0 are the same value. So that means they're exact same spot. So think about that log graph, right? That log graph, when log, that was 0, so was the um, square root of it. Okay? So the zeros match up. If f of x is between 0 and 1, the graph of absolute f of x lies above or below. So think about that one that we did that kind of went a little bit higher. It's going to be above, okay? If f of x is one, it lies on again. Because why is that? Because square root of one is one. So if it's a one inside versus a one outside, it doesn't matter because square root of one is one, just like zero is zero. And then lastly, when it's bigger than one, it's going to be below. You can look at that in the graphs from above. So if we look at it, well, we're going to look at this next one. But you can look at it in the graphs previously, if you're not sure what it's saying. Look at the ranges for those. Okay. All right. <laughs> On the decline here. Okay. We shall look in more detail at the graphs that contain, contain oblique straight line segments, okay, such as graphs 3 and 4 from the beginning of this lesson. The graphs of f of x and root f of x from these examples are shown below. So here's the two graphs. So x plus 1 and root x plus 1. So oblique just means they intersect. Okay. See how they kind of cross over? They meet, they meet, okay. they meet, they meet, go through. Notice that in both cases, the graph of the radical function is curved similar to the shape of an opened umbrella. In mathematics, a graph which is curved like any part of an upturned U, such as the curved, so I better write this here so people can see on the video. So this is your curved up, curved down, curved over, left, right. All those are called concave down. Any type of shape where it's bubbling down. We know concave down from our uh, points of inflection. So no points, that's all concave down versus these are your concave ups. Okay, parabola like that, that's concave up. If any part of the graph of x contains an oblique straight line segment, then the corresponding part of the um, radical graph will be concave down. Now this is an easy thing to remember, okay? I know you guys are dying on me, listen. This is an easy thing to remember because think about the very simple graph of x. x is what? x is a straight line, right? 
So what it's saying is that's a line segment, correct? If I root x, what does that give me? A concave down graph. Okay, so every time there's a straight line and you do the radical of it, it's a concave down compare like conversion. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's what they're saying here. No, just for any line. So like the x plus one, see this right here? This is x plus one. So x plus one is a concave down curve. Is that, that's what I mean? Yeah. Same, concave down, 2x, yep, just line. Yep. So like see these right here? This is x and negative x. They're both concave down. Okay? Right, because that's not a line, that p. Okay? So consider the following points when sketching the graph of the radical function. I'm going to start saying radical function here, okay? So when f of x is less than 0, then the graph of y equals radical function does not exist. We know that, okay? Because that's below, there's no negative outputs. When f of x is 0, the radical function equals 0. We know that. And when they equal 1, they also equal 1. This is just summarizing all information, guys and gals. Okay, between 0 and 1, the graph lies above it. Bigger than 1, it goes below it. And when the radical function has the square roots, they're easy to see because they're perfect. So think about square roots of uh, simple numbers like 4, 9, 16, stuff like that. And then lastly, when your f of x has straight lines, it's going to be concave down for the radical function. That's what we've covered just in all those graphs we looked at. Last page. So what they're doing now is they're making you kind of uh, view this weird graph by, by what you've learned. So the graph of the function y equals f of x is shown. Okay, sketch the graph of what would the radical function look like. So what's that? So here's how you do it. Right, we're looking for straight lines, which has a lot of straight lines. Okay, we're looking for zeros, and we're looking for the slope. If the slope's bigger than one, we know that's below. If it's smaller than one, we know it's above. So that's things we're looking at. So our new graph, let's just do the easy stuff first. We know they're gonna share here, they're gonna share here, they're gonna share here. Where else are they going to share? Nope. Where else on that line? Read the line about the zeros. What else does it say? What else do they share? Y equals not two. Here, I'll read it to you. It says, when f of x equals zero, then radical f of x equals zero. When f of x is one, then radical f of x is one. So they also share one. Wherever there is one for your original, it's going to share these points as well. So those points are all going to go through for your radical function. So what you have to ask yourself now is, what's the slope from here to here? Well, it's up one, two, three, four, one, two. So that's a slope of two. Is that bigger than one or less than one? Bigger. So then if you look at your thing right before, that means below, right? Okay? So that means these guys are going like, let's see here, try to get as close as they how they have it here. Just like that. No, the R radical is gonna have the concave down. It's gonna be concave down this whole thing because they're all straight lines. Okay? Right, yep. But see, it's not gonna change until the next spot. So right here, this slope changes to negative 1 half. It's not gonna get above it until the point that they meet at. Does that make sense? So see this right here? Let's just show this section. I know you guys are really wore out, I get it. Okay, right here, right? That's two. And then it goes flattened out, so this is gonna kinda flatten out as well. And then we have negative 1 half. It's not just gonna jump above this, like, cause 1 half it's supposed to be above, right? it crosses it above at the spot that they share. So it's gonna go like this. It's gonna go like this, it's gonna come down here, concave down, and then it's going to be above here. See, just slightly above, and it's gonna come hit that zero with it as well. 
So it come, kind of comes full circle there, goes through that point of one they share, and hits that zero they share. So it's real tight. I have a really bad insert here. Let me redo this part here. I was just trying to show you that it comes above. So it's going to come real tight here, and it's going to hit the bottom here. The reason I did that and redrew that is because what's the slope here? Up 1 over 2, so where should it be? Above. So it's going to come above still, hit that dot there. Okay. So this is where it gets a little tricky. This slope here is down 1 over 1. So what happens there? Right, it stays the same, but it has to hit. So I can't go, this is hard to explain. This right here has to go through, and like it almost stays right on the line there. Yeah, it is on it. I'm just drawing it bigger so you can see it. So that's how it goes. This part right here is confusing. I'll try to get a better way to like explain this, but it goes below, but the slope's 1 half, but we have to get to that point they share. Right, all these are concave down because they're all straight lines. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so this green is our radical function. Like that. Interesting. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about these domains real quick. State the domain of the original. The domain of the original is all reals because uh, this guy says the arrows are keeping going. Okay, what's the range of the original? Looks like it's four and lower, huh? So y less than or equal to four. Okay, what is the domain of my radical function? Negative three to 16, right? Negative 3, 16. Between those two. Okay. Um, and then here, radical f of x for the range, the range is just simply greater than, no, sorry. It's greater than 0, but also less than 4, right? So I can write this as in between, because it doesn't go above 4. So actually, that's even a y again. What's this thing flattening out at? It's not 4. What's the square root of 4? 2. So it's going to be between 0 and 2. I got fixated on that 4 there, my bad. That's all. All right, last thing. We'll stop. Okay, in each case, the graph of g of x is shown. h of x is the radical function g of x. Determine the domain and range of h of x without sketching the graph. So we want to figure out the domain and range of what the radical function would be. That's all we're doing. We're not doing any sketching here. Okay, so what would the domain and the range be? Domain and range be of the radical function for that. Well, there's no just looking at it. So what we want to look for, when is there a problem with our domain? When what? When we're below 0. Is that first one ever below 0? So there's no problem. So this one's x, e, r. And then how about my range? So what's the minimum value? 3. So what's the radical 3? It's just radical 3, right? That's not a nice, smooth number. So your y is greater than or equal to radical 3. Does that make sense? Because the y value of 3, so the radical of 3, because it's the radical function. All right, part b, it's a little trickier. We have stuff with the negative, right? And it's broken up twice. So what I mean by that is, is I have two sections I'm concerned about. I'm concerned here, and I'm concerned here. So my domain is good, it's green, for here and here. So do my domain can be less than negative 2, right? 
hand. Right, greater than three, less than eight. So between three and eight, right? Because that has a limit. So this is how we got it. We have two sections. Our first section is less than negative two, that's this one. Our second section is between three and eight, right there. How about the range? Okay, greater than zero, yeah. Oh, this does stop here, but that's fine. We can leave it like that, it's fine. What's that? Sorry. Action. So the point is, is that, so it's zero, what's the, see how that stops? What's the square root of nine? Three, so it's between zero and three for that piece. Okay, the other piece is between zero and two. How do I get two? Zero and two, so I don't need to add this one because this one covers it, right? Zero to three, zero to two, so my range is already covered with the zero to three. So it's just zero to three is all I need. Okay, that's all. Okay. Well.